What's up everybody? Chris with South Carolina Gun School and today we're going to be talking about traveling outside of the state uh, and flying uh, just in general traveling with your gun. That's what we're going to talk about today. Welcome back everybody. I uh, just wanted to uh, take some time today and just kind of talk about traveling uh, with your firearm. Uh, just go over a couple of things so everybody has kind of a general idea of what to expect and uh, what you're responsible for uh, when you are traveling with your firearm. So that's a few things that we're going to talk about today. Uh, not a really long video per se. Uh, but just uh, to give you some information on what it would be like when you start to uh, travel with your gun. Uh, the big thing is your responsibility. It, it's your responsibility to know what the laws are for the state or states that you're going to with your firearm. Uh, those, it's not like getting a speeding ticket or going down the road and not really sure what the speed limit is and being like, oh, I didn't know that's what it was. Uh, what I like to say is you don't get a dummy card on this. Okay, so you can't be like, oh, I didn't know we couldn't keep a gun there. That's, that is not how this works. Um, so you've got to know what the laws are. Uh, and some other things is knowing those laws will also help you depending on what state that you're going to. Uh, so... What I mean is, is where you can keep it in your vehicle. Uh, I will have a uh, map up here at the end that's gonna show you all the states where they recognize a South Carolina permit. Uh, every state has its own website to show you, uh, or you can go to the state you're going to and look at their website, and it will also show you uh, who they recognize and who they don't recognize. Uh, same thing for South Carolina. You can go up, pull up SLED's website. Uh, that's South Carolina Law Enforcement Division. They're the ones that handle all of our permits and laws and things around that. So you pull their site up and you'll be able to see what states recognize our permit. And then in another map, it'll also show you whose we recognize. Uh, so matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and put both of those maps up uh, here at the end so you can go in and take a look at it. Uh, but again, it's your responsibility to know that. Uh, if you're not sure, call a local law enforcement office for, for where you're traveling to or a state trooper's office. I went as far one time as calling a Missouri state trooper's office uh, to see uh, because the way the law read was a little gray area and I was reading it one way, my brother was reading it another way. So that was something where I just called a state trooper's office and they put me in contact with somebody that was able to answer my questions or a gun store or really it'd probably be best to call a instructor because um, sometimes gun stores aren't fully up to date on all the laws not saying anything bad about them they've got other stuff they've got to worry about um, if they're not actually teaching any of the permit stuff or going, keeping up with the gun stuff but uh, where you're going to keep it in your vehicle is going to differ Okay, so for South Carolina without a permit, um, glove box or console, and I've done a video talking about South Carolina that you can go in and take a look at. I'm not going to elaborate, but uh, if you're coming to South Carolina and you don't have a permit or we don't recognize your permit, glove box or console, loaded one in the chamber, you're totally legal. Main thing is let law enforcement know if you're pulled over that you've got a gun and where it's at and then follow their commands. Um, permit wise that does change things but I've got like I said I've got a video I'm not gonna waste time go out and check that video out and it's there on our YouTube page for you to look at on where you can have it in your vehicle okay the main thing is those aren't gonna be the same spots when you're traveling outside of South Carolina uh, some will be some won't be and again it is your responsibility and I'm gonna keep repeating that so you understand it is your responsibility 
to know where you can and can't have it in your vehicle when you travel okay so every state should have a website set up for that again if you're not sure go to the state that you're going to check out their website and they should also have something set up or there's other um, websites there's even phone applications that you can download onto your smartphone now and be able to get that information as well matter of fact i will go ahead and include those in the description down below on uh, some of the websites i use and some of the phone applications i use now as far as flying totally different ball game okay um i'll be honest i have not flown with guns Okay, I kind of have an idea of what the procedure is just from looking at uh, TSA's website. Uh, main thing is a hard case. So hard case being like Pelican, um, Nanook, Condition 1, uh, there are some metal gun cases. All right, they've got to be locked up. Um, guns have to be unloaded. Magazines have to be unloaded. You can't have any loose ammo, so not in an ammo can or not just laying in the case. Uh, some airlines, if I'm not mistaken, require them to be in the original box that you purchased them in some airlines are fine as long as they're in the little plastic containers that you can purchase and put them in there kind of one by one so but it can't just be loose in an ammo can um, and I might be wrong on that if I am please somebody correct me I'm not trying to get into any kind of arguments or anything feel free to correct me if I have said something incorrect okay I'm not gonna sit here and say that I know everything I've done as much research as I possibly can on a lot of this stuff but now also with the flying what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, link in uh, Ken Scott's video uh, Ken Scott with Prevectus Group he has a wonderful video out on his YouTube page uh, that where he actually videoed the steps you go through uh, when you fly so I'm going to have that linked in the description as well too so you can go over there and check that out um, this for me is mainly we're time I'm kind of talking about driving okay but you still even if you're flying you still got to know the laws for the state that you're going to if you rent a car okay or if you're gonna be carrying on you uh, things like that so what I'm talking about is if you're going to a state where we don't or you don't have reciprocity reciprocity meaning they don't recognize your permit you need to look at their gun laws and see if they're an open carry state or see if they're a constitutional carry state. All right, there are only two states that you have to be a resident to open carry. Okay, one of them is Wyoming, and you'll have to forgive me, it's either Idaho or Montana is the other. All right, so what that means is that you have to be a resident of that state to be able to open carry. So if they don't recognize our permits, or your permit, I keep saying ours, I apologize, your permit, depending on what state you're in, then you're not gonna be able to open carry. All right, so that means you gotta be a resident, you pretty much gotta reside there, license, property, all that good stuff, okay? So those two states, if you don't have reciprocity, then you're not gonna be able to do that. Okay, so for South Carolina, we have reciprocity, they recognize our permit. All right, but what I'm talking about is, let's say, for North Carolina. North Carolina is an open carry state. So that means I don't have to have a permit or anything. I don't have to be a resident. I can drive up to North Carolina uh, with or without a permit and open carry. So there are other states. As a matter of fact, I'll run through a quick list. Some of these uh, probably have added uh, constitutional carry. Some uh, might have actually, actually added open carry. I haven't updated this list. In about a month or so so some states have changed so these are your open carry states alabama alaska arizona arkansas colorado delaware idaho kansas kentucky louisiana maine michigan missouri mississippi montana nebraska nevada new hampshire new mexico north carolina ohio oregon pennsylvania south and north dakota vermont Virginia, Washington State, West Virginia, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. Uh, Tennessee is not open carry, but they have passed constitutional carry uh, here this year. Um, and I think Oklahoma and Iowa were also looking at it. And Texas has also passed 
constitutional carry. So constitutional carry states, Arizona, Arkansas, Idaho, Kansas, Kentucky, Maine, Missouri, Mississippi, New Hampshire, North and South Dakota, Vermont, West Virginia, Wyoming, and again, Texas and Tennessee have added constitutional carry uh, this year. Uh, so if I've got, if I'm missing some states or I've got some of them wrong because things have changed, please feel free to correct me down in the comments. All right. Again, not looking to start any arguments. I'm just giving you uh, what I have here when I dug into it. So that's what I'm talking about when you're traveling. So let's say Colorado. Colorado is an open carry state. They don't recognize the South Carolina permit. So I can't conceal carry. All right, but I can go there and open carry because they're an open carry state. Uh, another one, Washington State, Oregon, okay, Pennsylvania, Delaware. All right, all of those are open carry states that don't recognize South Carolina's permit. So that means that when I go there, I just have to open carry. Now, no, I am not a fan of that, but if it gives me an option to carry my gun, I will take it. I just have to be a little bit more of my surroundings and I need a double retention holster, okay? And we're gonna talk about some of that in a later video. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time. The main thing I want to get everybody to understand is look at the laws for the state you're going to in case they don't recognize our permits. And you definitely need to know the laws for where you can have it in your vehicle. And those are gonna change from handgun to rifle and shotgun. It's all gonna be different, but every state has laws where you can transport it in your vehicle. Just make sure you are following those laws. And again, check out the link down in the description for Ken Scott with Prevectus Group, his video on flying and taking your handgun with you, or I should say firearms, because there's you can fly with rifles and shotguns and all that stuff. Uh, check baggage, all this good stuff. But check out his video. He does a great job to show you what that process is. Uh, this is just, I want you to understand, let's say you're driving or you're going to another state for a couple of days or a couple of months or a week or whatever, know the law so you don't get in trouble. You don't get dummy cards on these like you might with like speed limits or wrong turns and things like that. All right, know your laws, do your research. Uh, if you're coming to South Carolina, I've got videos up on our YouTube page here that talk about where you can have it in your vehicle and all that stuff or please feel free to reach out to me and I will be glad to answer any questions uh, that you have and help you understand what you can and can't do while you're here in South Carolina. So I hope you everybody enjoyed the video. I hope you get some good information from it. And if you ever have questions, reach out. Uh, but main thing is, is um, make sure you know the laws. Um, some of the, what I forgot is like, tax stamps for SBRs and silencers, look I'm saying silencers, suppressors. I got in a debate about this the other day and it's just stuck in my mind. But for tax stamps, so with stuff with tax stamps, that's a different ball game when you're traveling. Um, I'm going to tell you to go to the ATF website and look the information up there. Uh, I don't have any of that stuff right now, so I haven't had to personally experience it. I'm sure there's probably videos out there that will, but those are two things when it comes with those tax stamps. It's a totally different world. Um, from my understanding, you can't just hop in and go. So there's other paperwork, I think, that's involved with that, so make sure you check that out. Um, that was one thing I forgot, and I apologize. But please make sure you check out our website, scgunschool.com. All right, go check out our sponsors, uh, Sutter Law Firm, uh, Get Right Personal Training, Lau Welding and Grading, and UAG Custom Shop for any type of gunsmithing work. Uh, we cannot thank them enough for what they help us do here. Uh, and also, please go check out NoOtherChoice.com. Uh, we are one of the first affiliates with them and use code SCGS, like South Carolina Gun School, SCGS and the number five, and you will get a discount off of gear, uh, equipment, clothing, and all kind of great things like that. So thank you everybody for watching, supporting, and getting us up to over a thousand subscribers. It's been a hard, hard fight. Uh, 
with everything going on, but please continue to support. Again, thanks to all our sponsors. Thanks to No Other Choice for bringing us on as an affiliate. And I hope to see you all on the range one day. If you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range.